So I just wanted to do a quick little segment on Russia here. And um, I was anticipating it to be really awesome, but it's actually going to be extremely awesome. Um, so uh, I just grabbed my old-fashioned encyclopedia, and it was pretty good. Uh, it said a couple really interesting things. Um, so basically, uh, Russia is the largest country in the world. Um, and uh, so that means probably by area. Um, and... Uh, and uh, Russia covers more than half of Europe and two-thirds of Asia. Um, and it makes up uh, more than one-seventh of the total world's land area. Um, and, uh, and Russia is also larger than four continents. So it's larger than South America. It's larger than Antarctica. It's larger than Europe. And it's larger than Australia. Um, so basically... Uh, it's uh, very large, um, and uh, I just wanted to start with this map here so you can kind of see um, what's going on. Uh, we can kind of move this around a little bit. You see Europe and kind of Russia here. So I have a little, uh, first of all, I have the uh, climate map here. Uh, I might take a moment to load, um, but, uh, and then I also got uh, this uh, Earth at Night uh, map. And uh, there it's loading in, and uh, also a population map. Um, so with the population map, it's a little bit kind of dim it. And you can see this like whiter areas is the population. Um, and then the earth at night is kind of also hard to see, but you can kind of bring in earth at night and population. It's just valuable to see. So giving you this basic idea and uh, let's hopefully get the uh, climate one in here yeah so this is actually really interesting so this is supposed to be all about economics uh, but basically you can kind of see it's pretty clearly defined in this purple area as russia um and uh yeah pretty cold but actually even this area all the way up into here and in these area is also part of Russia and then uh, basically heading out into St. Petersburg. Um, but uh, just to get us started on this. So there's a lot of different websites. Um, one that's uh, reasonable here just to get a quick GDP number is the worldbank.org, data.worldbank.org. And what I found is really surprising here is that, so the economy in Russia was about 2.2 two trillion dollars and it's basically dropped to about 1.2 trillion in 2016 and then started to go up again so that's an important thing to think about in terms of what's been going on recently and another really interesting thing to look at is the population map and i was very surprised so <clears throat> the russian population kind of had a peak around 1992 or so um, and then it has just been dropping. Um, so where are those people going? Uh, that's a good question. Um, and only recently in about 2008 has the population started peaking in. And then in 2017, you can kind of see it starting to maybe even go down again. So that's a very interesting uh, fact. Uh, but about 150 million people say between that and, you know, basically 150 million. So about half population of the United States. So a quick little graph here to look at is life expectancy. Um, this is primarily economics discussion, but you can see around 1988, uh, the life expectancy was kind of going up until about 1988 and then started to go down. So <clears throat> most of the 90s, uh, life expectancy kept getting worse. And then about 2003, things suddenly changed. So in terms of economics, it might be interesting to see what happened around 2003 in terms of the healthcare industry in Russia. And maybe that's uh, one of the things that Russia Russians have been lacking, um, you know, just uh, having quality or high quality healthcare. So uh, this is a graph I was gonna kind of do myself, but you can see here, um, largest GDP in the world, is China with 24 trillion and then 20 trillion US, about 8 trillion for India, and then 5 trillion for Japan and then Germany, and then after Germany is Russia.
um, and then Indonesia and Brazil. Um, so the interesting thing is you might say, well, Brazil and Russia are similar. Um, and then this kind of shows you the uh, breakdown for a pie chart. Um, so I presume this is the rest of the world. So when you look at it this way, this is a pretty big slice for the whole entire planet. Um, and uh, just to get that started. So, and then there's a, a GDP nominal, and this is just a map. So you can kind of see what this looks like. So it's pretty interesting just to see, uh, you know, with, the, it's the same data as before, but just a map. So you can kind of see, you know, America and China quite a bit ahead here. And then you have Germany and India and uh, Japan here, kind of in a middle color. Um, but, uh, uh, and then Russia kind of at the same level as these other guys here. So pretty similar to Europe uh, or like even uh, Saudi Arabia and so on. Uh, so this is one of my favorite maps. It's open topo and you kind of see what's going on here. There's this big mountain range, which I've really been interested in in a while. I think it's the Ural mountain range. Um, and that basically heads up to this weird little island. But you can see kind of this other area in Russia and then kind of this other valley area here with this big river system. And then kind of a more mountainous side of Russia and then even heading down into here, which is still part of Russia. And then even into Japan right here. So, and then the United States heading off over into Alaska. But a uh, super cool map just to think about the economics. Um, so, you know, from the economic standpoint, we're going to get into this, but uh, pretty much half of the Russian economy is in this area, which is out of Moscow um, here. Uh, so I was pretty surprised about this, um, basically showing a corruption map. So not so good sign for Russia. So uh, some of the most corrupt countries in the world, you can see here um, the Horn of Africa and then kind of heading into... Uh, Afghanistan and then even almost into Russia so and then obviously you can see North Korea here um, and Venezuela and some others so but you have very not so corrupt basically the least corrupt countries right next to Russia so makes you wonder maybe is St. Petersburg different or is there a uh, like a different side to Russia perhaps uh, out in the wilderness I've heard uh, Greenland is very dangerous um, for example, um, but uh, anyway, interesting just to see the corruption map. So uh, again, a huge surprise for me uh, in Russia. So basically you can see that 30% uh, or more, it's like 50% of their economy is based on like energy, coal, petroleum, these kinds of things. And even more so because when you think about it, it's pretty similar to uh, a lot of these uh, you know, iron and uh, other things. And this is one of the reasons I did try to invest in some companies in Russia. And uh, I was just really surprised that the quality or the perceived quality, at least over the internet, uh, of a lot of these companies. So you can kind of see also that there's a pretty sizable uh, food chunk here. But, uh, and I really hope that the food quality in Russia becomes extraordinary. It'd be interesting. I've seen a lot of other places like Indonesia, um, have quite a big change and uh, let's just look at their export map um, so you can kind of see like so here's Russia a lot of their exports uh, about 10 billion dollars worth of exports going to the United States looks like Finland is pretty high almost as much going to Finland as uh, there is to the entire United States and uh, China here and then you can also see Kazakhstan getting a lot of exports um, and this is profitable so this is um, I did net exports on this so it's a little bit different than total exports um, and you can also see Turkey being a big part of this and I actually did a study of Turkey right before this and look at this little Netherlands holy cow 27 billion so Netherlands getting the biggest chunk hmm that is interesting um so Anyway, let's go to this chart too. This was interesting because you can kind of see all of it was minerals. Um, they do about 10% of the total minerals of Earth, um, which is huge. Um, and uh, then you can say uh, these guys here. Um, what is that? That's like metals and so on. So it's just kind of interesting to see a general 
pretty harsh downturn in general of most of these. And then with the exception of agriculture, right, this yellow line here, right, you can kind of see slowly coming up here through agriculture. But uh, interesting to see. And then this is kind of looking at not one more chart. Um, taking a little while, but you can see they've had a bigger time of minerals. Minerals in around 2012 was a huge part of their economy, and then their economy looks like it really started to suffer um, right around 2013. I think we saw that in the GDP graph here, so you can see matches up 2013. Um, and uh, but man, does it look huge drop here on this graph. Um, but agriculture steadily making a rise all throughout these times. And I really think one of the reasons is because they can help the Middle East. And it looks like on this map here, maybe a lot of the Middle East help goes through Kazakhstan and then is from Kazakhstan, maybe is exported elsewhere, uh, even to Uzbekistan and so on. Um, and <clears throat> our Belarus and going out into Eastern Europe. But Anyway, so just interesting to see over time what's going on. Um, I can do a quick import visualization just to see. And you can see their imports, and it's a little bit hard to see on this, so I'm going to change this to two-digit. And their imports, they're importing, getting some tourists, significant amount, industrial machinery and vehicles. So a lot of this could change. I mean, even India is producing a lot of vehicles. You didn't see anything on vehicles for the... Uh, uh, export side or did we not even so some changes needed for in Russia but uh, interesting to see overall uh, just how Russian exports are fitting in so if you're I'm, I'm gonna try to do a separate thing on businesses here and we're gonna look at details of like a lot of different businesses in Russia but <clears throat> this is just to kind of overview of the economy um, so this is a surprisingly interesting map came from uh, it's all their rupees here but uh, I'm gonna take it back in a moment and we're gonna look at the dollar amount but you can kind of see what's going on so you can see where people are rich and where people are not so rich so there's kind of these like areas right here <clears throat> and right here and this actually area makes a lot of sense if you study the geography um, from that other map you can kind of see this is getting close down into Japan Korea and China and so on and this little island um, but actually I've looked at some really detailed images of some of these places and it looks like it's actually struggling pretty cold still even up into here um, <clears throat> but this gives you a lot of fine detail and this is in rupees let me see if I can get this map back to uh, the other uh, uh, yeah so they have um, there's another map but <clears throat> showing uh, exactly what the uh, details are for our economy uh, so unfortunately, I couldn't get the map very big here, but <clears throat> that was from this page, Economy of Russia. Uh, so you can see that these darker green areas was basically fifty thousand uh, <clears throat> dollars per person per year, um, so kind of high. Um, and then these light green are thirty thousand, uh, and then the Russian average being about ten to twenty, <clears throat> meaning uh, kind of these lighter green, and then seven to nine and under three thousand dollars a year and that's getting very low and um i think the real picture is much more complex in terms of what people are making here in russia but certainly interesting just to see the map here so this is one of those crazy graphs um that i thought was really helpful just so look at this so this is the graduates by um, a location in thousands. So you see that Russia has a huge chunk of the total graduates. And I think that's partly because there's a lot of people, I mean, 150 million people or so. United Kingdom, approximately one third of the graduates that Russia has. France, I mean, about the same. Uh, Ukraine, and a lot of ways people say Ukraine can be part of Russia or even Poland right <clears throat> and then just a breakdown of all these other smaller countries so certainly a lot of educated people um coming out of russia uh so i'm not even sure what to say about this but the uh russian stock index is called the moex russian index um and this is the longest period i could get for it 
um, on TradingView. Um, but basically, you can see that um, most of the interesting part, like if you really want to study the economy, um, the huge amount of growth happened basically from about September of 1998 all the way up to uh, 2008 and you almost don't even see the crash of 2001 in here kind of in there so <clears throat> um but certainly the 2008 um and it's interesting to think about so like this was a dot-com crash and then here it was primarily housing market bubble so that it's just interesting that all over the world that that like you see down here and this is a this is a price oscillator uh, every uh, four months versus the 12 months. Um, but basically, the parts that I really was interested in is looking at uh, basically the start. So this is a price oscillator down is around March of 2011. And then finally, some sense uh, a possible recovery, maybe in July of 2013. So that goes back back to the GDP. So right around here, we see 2013, right? And that shows the peak. So it doesn't quite, <coughs> so the, although the, the stock market wouldn't really agree with uh, basically the GDP numbers by the World Bank. Um, so that's why you wanna double check it with this kind of thing, right? So here you'd say that the peak was right around it here, December, 2016 and then from there everything kept getting better and this is on a log graph um i could do it on a regular and it looks different but i really just want to do a log graph so you can see the relative changes way back here so although you know like this was a doubling in the size of the um you know economy so and this is yes it's a lot of increase but anyway so just looking at this MOEX Russian index. Uh, so here's kind of the final look at the Russian economy that we're gonna do. So <clears throat> you see right here around uh, December uh, 2003 uh, or 2002, right during that change, uh, things were getting better for the currency, the ruble, um, and then uh, things like spiked. So, uh, but around the world, things got bad. Um, but what that means is that relative to the United States, so the biggest change perhaps was in 2014. So that really devastated. So basically you got, uh, you know, $1 gave you about 30 of these. Today it's $1 gives you 70. So big significant problems. Um, and this looks like it doesn't look good. Maybe recently it's gotten a little bit better. And then maybe around February 2016, things got better all the way up until april 2017 but anyway um just a summary of the economy in russia let me know what you think i'm not an expert but i'd like to hear your ideas and let me know what you think thanks